Well, it's that time again. Time to spend more money on the Jeep. Like that ever ends. We're going to Jeep Care Center in Huntington Beach and Dustin's gonna put some new springs on. We're gonna switch out these Rough Country springs with Superlift springs and put some new shackles on, rock jock shackles. I've had the Rough Country springs on here for several years and they're just way too firm. Just not enough travel. So uh, we're going to put these super lift on and I think it's going to make a difference. I was, I was torn between putting super lift on or putting YJ springs on. But with the YJ springs I was going to have to make a lot of modifications. So this is going to be a little cleaner and hopefully it'll make a big difference. So every time you do something on the Jeep you're like, oh you know what, that's going to be the last thing I do for a while. I think I'm pretty good. Then you do the steering components and you're like, ah man, I really need new springs. It never ends. I always want something. The destination is on your right, Jeep K Center. Arrived. Dustin. So uh, today we're going to be uh, swapping out the lift kit on uh, TC CJ7. We're going to be putting a uh, super lift kit on. It's going to ride it quite a bit better. So here we've got our front and rear springs. We've got our springs prepped with our bushings and sleeves, everything all greased up and ready to go. And in addition to that, while we're changing out the leaf springs, we're going to do an upgrade to the shackles. We're going to ditch the, the stock shackles and we're going to upgrade to these nice rock jock quarter inch zinc plate shackles with greasable hardware front and rear. So the existing shackles, are they just, I mean, they're the original, right? That yeah, I've got on there now? They're the original, yeah. They're just made out of eighth inch stamped steel. And uh, these have a nice upgraded greasable hardware. So nice from a maintenance standpoint you keep the bushings nice and lubricated so i've got rough country uh springs on there right now and they've been really unforgiving <laughs> no flex to them it seems like at all yeah their springs are pretty stiff uh which is kind of surprising because their coil springs are usually really soft but their leaf springs are pretty stiff um yeah, unless you've got your jeep loaded up with a bunch of gear they're probably going to be bucking you around and, and beating you pretty badly so. so we decided to go with the super lift uh springs and they've got pretty good reviews i was also thinking about the yj springs but you have to do some modifications for that yeah so that requires you'd have to change the shackle hanger which is a simple bolt-on installation on the frame on the front end uh, but to do it right you also have to change the the spring pads on the axle housing and that requires some cutting and welding and that gets to be you know a little laborious all right so hopefully this uh, upgrade with uh, new springs will give me a little more flex. The new springs, the new shackles should actually help everything move too. Uh, you can tighten these down to the point where they don't pinch the leaf spring and, and keep everything from moving. They keep everything flexing and pivoting like it should. All right. So you ready to get started? Let's get cracking. All right. All right. You don't have a lift. This is a lot, a lot bigger task, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How many jack stands would you need at least? Well, uh, you need. You'd have to do. You'd still just have to do one axle at a time. You know, a couple jack stands underneath the frame, behind the 
the frame, the spring hangers here, so the frame doesn't slide on you once you get everything jacked up and unloaded, and then floor jack up the axle until you kind of unload the springs, and then you know same drill, just start removing pieces, shocks, and then U bolts. Start tearing it all down from there. Since these springs weren't uh, changed out that long ago, that none of this, none of these through bolts are going to be rusted in there. That's sometimes an issue with. Original leaf springs is that the bolts and the inner sleeves get rusted together. Should you put like an anti seize on that stuff? Yeah. Or? yeah, it's recommended to do that. Grease it up, anti seize, anything you can do to keep moisture from getting in there and corroding. To just support the axle. Yep. So no sleeve. These come out pretty easy. It's going to be. These ones do have a sleeve, which is unusual. It's using a smaller diameter bolt too. But you can see these frame bushings are pretty. It's pretty rotten. Do you think I'll be lower? So supposedly the, the kit that I put on with these rough country was supposed to be four inches, mm -hmm. but then they were saying that they thought it ended up being a little higher than that. Yeah, it looks a bit higher than four inches to me. I think uh, I think you're going to lose a little bit of ride height with this new kit. It came right out, huh? Yes, sir. Train noise. Yep. Okay. And so, did you put a little grease or anti seize? I put on some anti seize on that bolt. Yeah, I wire wheeled it to get the excess rust off of there to kind of clean her up on the bolt and on the threads, and then just kind of pasted the thing with uh, anti seize. So that way, it hopefully, won't ever lock up in there. You want the stuff to be snug, but not too tight. Shackle needs to be able to swing so the suspension works. I see a lot of people over tighten these and actually just pinch the bushing and destroy it. Because it needs to have some play in it. It needs to have it needs to have some tension in it so it holds everything together, but not so tight that it's smashing the shackles, the shackle walls together, or the smack shackle plates. What do they call that plate? Spring plate. So here's a little problem. The nut for the spring pack centering pin doesn't line up. Doesn't fit through our spring plate hole. Oh, so you need a bigger hole? Yeah. Come on, 
almost. Oh, there it is. All right. Fits. So now we fit. Ideally, you want this stuff torqued down enough so that you don't see any bit any air gap in between the spring plate and the top of the spring pack. You want it to be cinched together nice and tight. So that's about as tight as I'm going to put this side for now until I get that other side lined up because I'm probably going to have to twist and tilt the axle housing to get the other side to line up. But at least that'll hold everything in place on that side bolts off of this side. Now you'll notice on this side, we've got two different size U-bolts, a wide and a, and a narrow. Uh -huh. And that's because the wider one goes around the, the snout of the gear case right there. So it's gonna be a larger size U-bolt. And the replacement uh, shackles are like that as well? Yeah, so the replacement, we got new U-bolts too with this kit. So we got a wide and a narrow. Be aware of that if you're doing this on your own. So all the bolts came out pretty easy, huh? Mm-hmm. I so said the fact that you replaced all this stuff not that long ago yes. certainly worked in our favor, but you know, if you're working on a 30-something year old Jeep and it's original suspension, be prepared. Yeah. You're gonna be doing some cutting. Nothing's gonna come off easy. No, it's not gonna go as smooth as this is going. And you know, you may get to the front and not have any problems and then you get to the rear and you have a bunch of problems because the rear suspension, that's what gets splashed by all the water and everything as you're driving, so. Yeah. A little bit of red grease in there. And then those are new bushings? Or? Brand new, yep. So we're gonna take our leaf spring main eye bolt here and we're just gonna doctor it up a little bit on the wire wheel, clean up the threads, clean up whatever rust is built up on the shank here. You did the same thing on the other side did as well? the same thing on the other side, yeah. And then once we got it cleaned up, we'll give it a nice coating of uh, anti-seize to protect it. So these new shackles uh, have uh, grease fittings on them, huh? So these shackles are a little bit taller than the stock shackles, so they'll give you a little bit of lift just by adding these shackles to it. They're about, I think about three quarters of an inch taller than a stock shackle. So you think we might come out about the same as we where I was? We might come out about, I, I think we're gonna be a little bit lower than we were before. So the ears on this tab are just kind of pinched in a little bit, so we're just going to take them and open them up a little. Whenever I do something like that, it breaks. Bottom of the leaf spring pad here, there's a socket where the centering pin for the leaf spring pack is gonna go through. And that's gonna lock the axle housing and the leaf spring together. So that they don't wanna walk back and forth on each other. It's critical that you get those lined up. U-bolts. Small and our bigger U-bolt. The snout, yeah, it's a snout off the gear case here where the axle tube is pressed into it. And that's where the bigger U-bolt goes? Yep. Yeah, you'll... You see, that doesn't, doesn't want to fit over that. Right. So. And you shouldn't have to force them. And these U-bolts, are they pretty much about the same grade in terms of how heavy duty they are from the originals? Over the those... originals, they're going to be better than what the originals had in there. They should all be grade eight. You know, most of this stuff is going to be zinc coated. These are either powder coated or they're looks like they are powder coated. 
But the U bolts that we took off are those actually? Did they come from the Rough Country package, yeah, probably? Like, yeah, these aren't original. Yeah. And then you'll see you've got offset hole width here for the big U bolt and the small U bolts, and you can't you can't put it on. You wrong. can't put them on wrong. In theory, right? <laughs> well, you'd really have to try. <laughs> it's gonna make you work for it. to tighten those up until you got the other ones on? Yeah, because whenever you're changing leaf springs, it's almost a given that when you change one side, when you go to hook up the other side, the axle housing is gonna be swung one way or the other. So you need to keep this end loose so that you can get everything lined up, mostly referring to the center pin of the leaf spring and the socket on the axle housing itself. Once you get both sides in there and, and everything lined up, then you can go ahead and torque everything. Try to do everything as even as possible, going in a, in a star pattern. And that's about it. Once, uh, once everything's in there and torqued down, you should be good to go. After about 500 miles of driving, we'll want to go through and recheck torque on all this stuff. Okay. And you put a thread lock on there or I anything? Will. Yes. How's that bushing looking on that uh, quick release? Looks good. Looking Okay, so you're just going to kind of get this one in place, not completely tighten it, and why Correct. is that? Yeah, I'm just going to get things kind of mocked up and lined up. And the reason for that is because now with the new leaf pack, we've got a pinion shim here. The old leaf pack doesn't have that. So, like I said, I'm just going to loosen up that end, get everything kind of roughly aligned on this side, so that when I take that side apart, you know, we don't lose everything with where the actual housing is and, and all that fun stuff. So if you come around here to the side, you can see our pinion angle, see how high up our pinion is mm -hmm. because of those pinion angle shims. That's that's not gonna fly. We're gonna have all sorts of issues with that. Drive line vibrations, it's gonna starve the pinion bearings for oil. So now what we need to do is we need to delete this shim. So this, this whole shim that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that needs to go away. Right here. Yep. So these aren't original spring perches, and they're not in their original location. They've been cut and re-welded to adjust the pinion angle. So because of that, now we need to delete the pinion shim that comes with the new leaf, leaf spring kit. Okay. So... We have to undo a little bit of what we did back on the other side. So that clamp is to do what? To keep the axle housing from wanting to, to spin around, from wanting it to, to nose down. And it's so, just to act as a helping hand on that side while I take this side back apart again. And so these leaf springs with the shim would have worked except somebody installed. Somebody, yeah, re-welded the position of the, of the spring perches. They rotate them back on the axle like this to bring up the pinion. So that was probably done when they put the rough country springs on. That would be my guess, yeah. 
So if you pulled that pin out without the clamp, then the leaf springs would just come apart. Just gonna come apart. I mean, up till here where you've got the clamp on here, you know, but you know, the helper spring and, and all that will, will come off. There's always some kind of rub on every project like this, huh? Oh yeah. This is uh, not unusual at all. So you, th you take the shim out and then you're able to put the pin back in? Yep. So hold the pin. So the shim's too long now and you're adding some washers to compensate? Correct. And so they didn't have shims like that in the front, huh? No. Easier to take the shim off before you put it all together, huh? So those plates would have fit except for the washers that you had to put on there. Yep. So that's a thread lock? Yep. You put in grease and then grease fittings? Yep. All right, Dustin, you got it done? We got it all done and we got the suspension swapped out, uh, put the super lift springs on there and the new uh, rock jock shackles. Uh, suspension ride's a bit more supple now, should be a little bit more forgiving, not so bouncy on the street and uh, a little bit more compliant uh, off-road too. And we think those rough country springs probably had it riding a little higher than four inches actually, maybe, yeah, probably maybe five. Five, five and a half inches. Yeah, so yeah. it sits a little bit lower now. Well, thanks for coming in on your Saturday and during the holidays so hey, I could so I could get some video in. It's awesome. So thanks, Dustin. Appreciate it. All right. Anytime.